Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class, which is going to cover the current affairs of four days. Okay, because I was not well, that is why I could not make the video on Friday. So I made sure that I would cover the current affairs of all the four days. Okay, you can use the PPT of this PDF to cover the current affairs, or you have the daily current affairs PDF on our website also. Okay. So from there also you can cover the current affairs. Now guys, uh, here is our mobile application. I hope all of you are aware about it and most of you have already downloaded it. In case you haven't downloaded it, you can do so if you want to enjoy certain features like past years and updates about the live sessions and also updates about the examination. So you can download this application. Last but not the least is the information about the sources through which you can reach us. So here is our mobile number which is available on WhatsApp as well. So in case you have any query which you want to get resolved, you can use the WhatsApp number of ours or you can also place a call. And this is our email address. You can also write a mail to us and this is our main website. In case you want to know more about us, you can go to the website. So let's begin with the question number first. So the question is, ISRO has conducted the recovery trials for the Gaganyan mission in a private pool in collaboration with the Indian Navy. The trials were conducted at the Water Survival Test Facility, Kochi. The Gaganyan mission is India's first human space mission expected to be launched in 2024. The Indian astronauts are receiving training from DASH agency for the Gaganyan mission. So first of all, the very first fact that I want to highlight here is that all these agencies mentioned in the options are the state-owned agencies. Like ISRO is the state-owned agency of India. Similarly, these are the state-owned agencies of their respective nations. So now which agency is it? The right answer here is Roscosmos, which is Russia's space agency. And from there, the astronauts of India are getting their training so that they can be uh, onboarded on the Gaganyan spacecraft and then they can be uh, uh, they can be put in the space by the medium of this mission. Okay, now the very obvious fact that you must have noticed in the pattern of the question is that the question is taken from the current news, but the background fact related to the mission has been asked from you. So here the lesson for all of you is you need to prepare the Gaganyan mission very thoroughly. Okay, so prepare all the facts related to the mission. You can expect any question out of this mission because next year only it is going to be launched. Okay. Now the next thing or the next very obvious question should be there in your mind in case if this question is there in your mind then you are really curious and you are attentive in the class and in case this question has not even popped up in your mind then I would say guys that you need to be attentive and try to be more question questionable okay ask yourselves questions again and again related to the different things that you see related to the different things that you hear now why did I say the very obvious question is the presence of the Indian Navy. Why is ISRO collaborating with the Navy? ISRO is the space agency, Navy is an armed force. What is the connection between these two, especially with relation to the Gaganyan mission? So guys, here the key to this uh, mystery is that whenever any spacecraft is dismantled, then it is dismantled in the oceans. Okay, and from the oceans, the recovery work, the rescue work for the astronauts will be conducted by the Indian Navy only. That is why Indian Navy and uh, ISRO have collaborated so that at the right time, the recovery can be made. The recovery of the people who will go into the Gaganyan spacecraft. Okay, now, let's have a look at the facts also and one more thing that this private pool facility this water testing facility of Kochi is a facility of the Indian Navy only okay okay so Gaganyan is to be launched in 2024 it is India's first human space mission one more thing that NASA is also launching its human space mission and that mission is Artemis and this mission will also be launched by the year 2024 in which first women and first man of color would be sent to the space as it is claimed by NASA. Okay. 
uh, Indian astronauts are receiving training from Russia so that they can fly the spacecraft very efficiently. Then Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has built the crew model and it, it is again a very important milestone for India's independence, India's Atnebharta as far as, as far as the defense manufacturing is concerned. So the entire crew model has been developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. And you can yourself estimate the amount involved in this crew module and the money that has been accrued to the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the profit that this agency must have made and the uh, employment that the agency would have generated. Not only we are becoming independent in the defense manufacturing, at the same time we are also generating employment, we are also making our PSUs more profitable. So all of this is a circular link. Okay. The next part is that DRDO will provide the food for the astronauts, parachutes and the fire suppression system. And also DRDO will monitor the health of the crew when they are in space. Okay, so uh, this statement is particularly here to highlight the contribution made by different agencies. So here we have three agencies involved. First is Roscosmos of Russia, which is giving the training. Second is the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, which has developed the crew model. And third is DRDO, which is going to check the health of the astronauts and also going to provide every kind of facility to the astronauts. Okay. So these were the facts related to the current news. Now, guys, Indian Navy is in the news. So why not let uh, sh we should discuss about the territory that India has and the powers that Indian Navy can exercise in the ocean. Here I'm particularly talking about the division of the sea. Okay, so first of all, this division is made under the UN clause, United Nations Convention, uh, Convention on Law of the Sea, which was uh, signed in 1982. Okay, and it divides the ocean region into five zones. So first of all, a baseline is prepared alongside the coast of our country, because if we take into account India's coastline. Okay, so you can clearly see that India's coastline is this irregular. It's, it is asymmetrical. So in order to make it symmetrical, we draw a baseline. And from this baseline, we count the distance. And from that distance, we measure these zones. Okay. So first of all, this area which you are seeing is the internal borders. So from the baseline till the coastline, whatever is the area is called the inland waters. And this is like any other state. Yahan par Indian government ka jurisdiction highest hai. Agar yahan pe koi bhi crime kiya jata hai, then the laws of the land, which land, the main land will be applicable. Then from this zone to 12 kilometer, although the uh, ec exclusive econom economic zone line is quite shorter here, but understand that I'm drawing the picture here and this is drawn on a large scale. That is why we are able to see the entire exclusive economic zone in just a small picture. Okay. But understand this point that the distances are quite huge. Okay. For example, from the baseline till 12 nautical miles, we have our own, uh, territorial sea. Okay. This is called the territorial sea. Now, what is the territorial sea? Here you can see. So in the territorial sea, again, if a crime happens, then the entire responsibility or jurisdiction will be of the mainland. So sare laws India ke hi applicable honge if any crime happens in the territorial sea. Then comes the contiguous zone. So here what happens is that if any crime happens on the surface of the sea, then it is under the jurisdiction of our country. But in case, uh, a foreign uh, aircraft has entered into the contiguous zone that then we do not have any control. We do not have, the, have any control to shoot down the aircraft or to uh, not precisely shoot down, but to uh, have any kind of civil suit against that sh that aircraft also. So if uh, so the international airspace is free in the contiguous zone. Then comes the exclusive economic zone, which is 200 nautical miles from the baseline and understand this point that the contiguous zone is 24 nautical miles from the baseline okay then this 200 nautical miles uh, area gives us the power to explore the minerals and uh, do the exploration work here in the seabed or 
इन द ओशन फिशिंग भी कर सकते हैं सो वट एवर इज द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी अवेलेबल ऑन द ओशन यू कैन डू दैट बट यू कैन नॉट यू कैन नॉट रेस्ट्रेन एनी अदर country or any other private fishing vessel also to enter in this zone you cannot stop anyone you cannot put anyone under the law because here the laws are not applicable it's just that the economic zone has been given to us now let's have a look at the economic zone of india because we are surrounded by two countries uh, in our economic uh, zone that that which are sri lanka and bangladesh that is why our economic zone is this like this theek okay? hai so this is like the economic zone of india and this is also the economic zone of india because in the island case the economic zone is counted like circle theek okay? hai so here we have the andaman nicobar uh, economic zone and here we have the lakshma uh, lakshadweep islands economic zone so this is the exclusive economic zone of india Okay, guys. So the next question is, which company has launched India's first traffic management system for drones to allow drone operators to choose their routes? So here, guys, Sky Air is the right answer. So Sky Air is a drone delivering startup, and it has basically launched India's first traffic management system for drone. Now, what will happen? any kind of traffic management system is to uh, streamline the traffic for example if we have a road traffic management system it provides the red light it manages the routes if we have the air uh, traffic management system it also classifies the routes and also tells the operators whether the route is busy or not and similarly this will happen in the case of drones so in case of the drones the drone operators will be uh, informed in advance that this route is going to be busy so fly carefully okay and this is guys the picture which shows different zones and i have already taught you in one of my classes previously that 90% of india's air space is at present the green zone so here we can fly the drone up to 400 feet okay so that is the uh, zone division for the drones question is recently indian space research organization has successfully launched the small satellite launch vehicle d2 from shri harikota andhra pradesh with eos 7 azadi sat 2 and genus first satellites on board which company uh, company mentored 750 girls students to prepare the azadi sat 2 satellite so here guys space kids india is the right answer if you had covered this news in august then you would have already known the answer now what is the news exactly the news is that we have launched the sslv development uh, vehicle part 2 okay small satellite launch vehicle so let's have a look at the achievement so this is isro's failed sslv mission and this is isro's second attempt in launching the small satellite launch vehicle and we have succeeded so here what is the lesson the lesson is that success is no accident it is hard work perseverance learning studying sacrifice and most of all love of what you are doing or learning to do so this is an evident example of it learning hard work and perseverance made isro launch its small uh, satellite launch vehicle very successfully so you have to take lesson from it because inspiration is all around us in our daily lives it's just that you have to be observational okay you have to wake up the observational skills in, inside you and you need to observe the inspirations which are in our surroundings now coming back to the news so three satellites were onboarded on the launch vehicle first is the eos07 that is earth observational satellite second one is the azadi sat 2 now azadi sat 2 has been developed by the space kids india organization and it has chosen 750 girl students from different areas to prepare the satellite so that is a very huge achievement and it was to be launched on the 75th independence day but uh, it could not be launched because of some failures it was not successful so now it has been successful now genus first now it is a technology demonstrator satellite which has been onboarded on this small satellite launch vehicle and it has been developed by antares exilinks and anant technologies which is an indian company 
okay and this satellite has collaboration or basically it's a a uh, collaborative effort of seven countries okay so do remember this about the genes first satellite which is also a part of the launch theek hai then we have earth observational satellite and such satellites have been launched by india uh, very frequently in the past as well okay it is just to observe the earth now guys one more thing that there is a specific term which i am going to explain in very brief because again uh you don't need to have very much in depth knowledge about such critical terms because they are not asked in the examination but again as i always say that this is not a current affairs class only this is general awareness class as well so what is the meaning of a technology demonstration satellite so guys technology demonstration is basically very easy to understand from the term itself so this satellite is basically used to demonstrate a new kind of technology which is this that it is a 6u cube sat satellite okay so it is kind of a bus okay the concept of this satellite is like a bus so on this satellite we can have more more and more satellites uh, which are smaller in size okay for example if this is a satellite this is the genus first satellite so here we can on board other satellites as well which are smaller in size and then we can launch all these satellites in uh, equipped inside one satellite on the launch vehicle in just one attempt so this makes the entire operation of sending the satellites more and more cost effective and efficient for the countries also so this is in the demonstration stage only right now they are testing whether this technology will work or not but through the medium of this genus first satellite okay that much is clear now one more thing that i want to explain to you and that is the need of the sslv why have we developed the small satellite launch vehicle when we already had pslv and gslv in place and these two launch vehicles are doing absolutely fine work then why do we have this new kind of technology new kind of launch vehicle and that too will be used for the small satellites only whereas pslv launches big satellites and gslv launches uh, bigger satellites than the psl then why do we use the small satellite launch vehicle the reason is first of all right now the countries are focusing on developing the nano satellites because the space debris is also increasing nano satellites and short satellites are in trend as of now you can understand it in this one the second thing is that the creation of this SSLV takes very less time in comparison to the PSLV and GSL. Approximately one year time is needed to prepare a PSLV rocket launch vehicle. ठीक है, but in uh, comparison to the PSLV and GSLV, SSLV can be prepared in a very less cost, in a very less time. Therefore, it is become, uh, it is becoming more and more efficient for the ISRO itself to manufacture the. SSLV vehicle and launch the satellites of the different countries in a very cost efficient manner because this is one of the businesses of ISRO theek hai isse ISRO ko paisa bhi milta hai and it is also uh, coming as a soft power for india it is also becoming a branding uh, of india that india launches the satellites at a very low cost next question is where will the minister of communications electronics and it and railways shri ashwini vaishnav inaugurate the national philatelic exhibition amrit pax 2023 so here new delhi guys is the right answer it's nothing just a uh, an exhibition has taken place that is national philatelic exhibition philately relates to the postal stamps okay so here you can clearly see the poster has also been made in the manner of a postal stamp and also remember that uh, we are the head of the G20 and this has been organized or uh, you can say alongside the G20 or in the edges of the G20 meet theek hai next question is with which regional organization has india set up a new trade and technology council Uh, to focus on green technologies connectivity and resilient supply chains so here we have the five options out of which european union guys is the right answer so india and european union have established a new trade and technology council which is going to focus 
on green technologies, connectivity, and resilient supply chains. Now, related to the resilient supply chains, I hope that you know that India, Japan, Australia, and USA have already collaborated to create the resilient supply chain grouping and to ensure that we have alternative supply chain routes than China. Okay, so this particular council will focus on strategic technology, digital connectivity, digital governance working group will also be a part of this council, then green and clean energy technologies, trade, investment and resilient value working group. These are going to be a part of the trade and technology council. However, in my opinion, this statement would not be asked from you in any examination at any stage. Okay, so you can clearly skip uh, information as per my opinion but this statement is important that with which country has india established a new trade and technology council so it is not a country but a grouping that is european union now the question from you is you have to tell me that in which year eu was established okay now i hope you remember that eu has now 27 members Okay. And it has seven main organizations, European Council, Council of the European Union, European Commission, Parliament, Court of Justice, uh, Court of Auditors and Ombudsman. So these are seven organizations which are paramount to the European Union. Next question is, recently the third Asian digital ministers meeting with India was conducted virtually on the theme of synergy towards a sustainable digital future. The meeting was chaired by India and Dash. India and Asian Digital Plan 2023 was also adopted at the meeting. This year, the Asian Summit will be hosted by Dash, which will be a chair, chair of Dash as well. So here from the options itself, you can judge the level of question is very high. So I'm going to give you two to three seconds. If you have guessed the answer, then it is fine. If you have not guessed the answer, then also try to attempt the question and put your answer in the live chat. Okay. So that uh, you can yourself judge how much you are accurate in making the guesswork. Okay. This would be a reality check for you. If you are not able to make the right guesses, then stop making the guesswork even in the final examination. Because remember, you have negative marking as well. Okay. So don't forget this thing at any stage. And also in case you have marked any question uh, for review, mark for review in the final examination and you have made the guesswork here. So pay attention to this fact that mark for review questions are also counted in your final assessment. Okay. So be uh, vigilant whenever you mark, you mark the question on the basis of guesswork or your instinct. Now, let's discuss the answer of this question. So, the answer of this question is option A. Philippines and India conducted the third Asian Digital Ministers meeting. Indonesia is going to be the chair or the president of Asian Summit 2023. And whenever the Asian Summit is held, the East Asian Summit and also the Asian uh, Defense Ministers meeting plus is also held and the country which is the chair of asian is also the chair of the admm plus east asia summit asian foreign minister summit asian uh, secretariat meeting okay so that country is also the chair of all these four forums except for this forum which is a part of the sark southeast asian uh, it's not a part of sark it is a different forum southeast asia regional forum but it is not a part of the asian therefore the this option does not have any relation with the Asia. Okay. So apart from this, ADMM plus East Asia Summit, Asian Foreign Minister Summit and Asian Secretariat meeting, all of these are the uh, uh, forums where which are chaired by the same country. Okay. Now the right answer is this only. Philippines and Indonesia are going to uh, chair. Philippines has chaired the third Asian Digital Ministers meeting and uh, Indonesia is going to chair the Asian Summit 2023. So the third Asian digital ministers meeting had a theme. Synergy towards a sustainable digital future. Four chairs were India and Philippines. India Asian digital work plan 2023 was adopted at the meeting and the chair of the Asian and the East Asia summit in 2023 is Indonesia. 
the theme of the asian summit would be asian matters epicentrum of growth theek hai so do remember this thing now uh, the asian defense ministers meeting plus okay this is again a very important forum so this forum has 10 members of the asian and eight other dialogue partners and which are those partners australia china india japan new zealand republic of korea russia and united states so these are the countries which are the partners uh, of asian in the defense ministers meeting then the inaugural edition of the admm plus was held in hanoi vietnam in 2010 and the chairmanship of this forum is also with the country which is hosting the asian summit so right now it is with indonesia Moving on to the seventh question. So, as per a newspaper article published in February two thousand twenty-three, the Directorate General of GST Intelligence and the National Forensic Sciences University have signed an MOU for setting up digital forensic laboratories, along with exchange of information and knowledge, technological advancements, and skill development in the field of digital forensics to nab tax offenders. Identify the current. Correct statements with regards to the above paragraph. So, what are the statements? First statement is that the DG DGGI is the apex intelligence organization under the aegis of the Goods and Services Network. Then, NFSU is an institution of national importance established to promote studies and research in the forensic sciences and related fields. NFSU is the first and only institute in the field of forensic sciences which is located in Lucknow. भाई मुझे तो सारी ही स्टेटमेंट सही लग रही है बट इफ आई हैड एंट रेड द न्यूज एंड इफ आई हैड एंट प्रिपेयर द क्वेश्चन माई सेल्फ आई वुड हैव मार्क ऑल दीज थ्री ऑप्शन एज द राइट आंसर बट ऑब्वियसली ऑल द थ्री ऑप्शन आर नॉट गिवन इन दी ऑप्शन दैट मीन्स ऑल द स्टेटमेंट्स आर नॉट करेक्ट ठीक है नाउ विच स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट ओनली द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट ऑल दो द फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड ऑल्सो अपियर टू बी वेरी करेक्ट बट दीज आर नॉट करेक्ट वाई बिकॉज द डी जी जी आई इज नॉट अंडर द एजेस ऑफ जी एस टी नेटवर्क फादर इट इज अंडर द सी बी आई सी द सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस ओके देन द एन एफ एस यू इज द ओनली इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड द फर्स्ट इंस्टीट्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ फॉरेंसिक साइंसिस बट इट इज नॉट लोकेटेड इन लखनऊ इट इज लोकेटेड इन डेली सो दीज आर दी uh anomalies in the statements now coming to the news so the news is very simple that an mou has been signed between the directorate general of gst intelligence and the national forensic sciences university and what's the purpose the purpose is to set up the digital forensic laboratories which are going to help in undertaking the work of forensics now what kind of forensics not the forensic which was shown in the cid or which is done when a crime is happening but when uh, a murder happens or that kind of forensic we are not talking about we are talking about the forensic which is done in the field of finances okay which is like financial audit hota hai aapka like tax audits theek hai so forensics in terms of the tax liabilities okay so these digital forensic lab laboratories will definitely work for uh, checking the work related to gst theek hai whether the people are paying gst properly or not so that will be the forte of this digital forensic laboratory now as far as the knowledge nuggets are concerned so do know this fact that the dggi is the apex intelligence organization under the central board of indirect access and customs for the collection of uh information and for taking necessary measures to check the evasion of gst and let's know about the nfsu as well so nfsu is the first and only institution which works in the field of forensic sciences and uh, it is an institution of national importance theek hai so do remember this fact as well institution of national importance is a very critical position given to any university and we have a limited number of institution of national importance in india at present and what is that number this is your task which you are going to tell me in the comment section below uh this nfsu has the state of the art technology in digital forensics and capability to study and analyze the digital evidences and it was established in 1972 in delhi next question is which of the following payment service providers has have recently allowed the 
uh, linking of credit cards with UPI. So here, Paytm is the right answer. Along with Paytm, MobiQuick has also allowed this service on its platform. Okay, now what will happen? Now here you can clearly see in this picture, which is beautifully elaborating the entire procedure. In the normal UPI, what we used to do, we will we used to scan the QR code and then the amount is debited from our uh, saving account, right? So that happens in the normal U UPI. Now what will happen from now onwards, all those people who have the credit cards, they can link their credit card with the UPI and then whenever they scan their QR code, the payment will be deducted from their credit card. Okay, so this gives them the option or the window of uh, 40 to 50 days, which is the uh, time period for making the bill payment. So that time period is given to the credit card holders for saving their money. Okay, so that is the uh, basic idea behind linking the credit card with UPI so that you can pay the money directly through the credit card and your money in your bank account will be saved. That is the basic idea okay for the time period of 40 to 50 days which is the window for making the bill payment okay so that you do not lose on your interest payments which the bank will make pay okay and after 40 to 50 days obviously you have to make the payment back to the credit card company but this interest loss will not happen which used to happen in the case of normal upi because the money used to deduct from the account then and there only next question is what is the theme of the World Pulses Day 2023? So here, Pulses for a Sustainable Future is the theme, okay? February 10 is the date on which we celebrate the World Pulses Day. And guys, Pulses, usually we have a misconception that Pulses means dal. Dal which we use to, uh, which we eat in our daily uh, food in our daily meals that is pulses but guys pulses has a very broad definition it has in its purview the chickpeas the lentils the dry peas and the beans so rajma chole and everything uh, cholia comes under the definition of pulses only and with pulses we know that these are the leguminous plants so they are very helpful for the soil as well now if you want to pulses related zyada information chahiye, to you can use the ard quotes or the ard videos by surat sir okay or you can ask from him in the discussion forum because he is the expert faculty in agriculture and rural development or itna zyada expertise meri nahi hai agriculture mein. so i won't be able to tell you what exactly uh, are the characteristics of pulses jitna pata hai utna bata diya theek hai now the last question of the day is who has won the hyderabad eprex 2023 so here gene eric one has won this Hyderabad Eprix 2023. Now, first of all, he is from France. He is a France uh, motor uh, racer. And the second fact is that it is for, for the first time that India hosted the Eprix. Eprix means what? It means that all the EVs were used in the motor vehicle race, in this F Formula One race. Okay? And uh, this is the picture of the winner. And this is the end of this video. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed the content. Thank you so much for watching the video and keep working hard. Remember the quote that I mentioned. Hard work always pays off. Goodbye.